Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Goat Shed Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Connect. Alongside me is my co-host, Jacob Bulls. How you doing, Jacob? Good. How are you doing, Nick? Dude, I'm doing good. So this is our first episode. Kind of weird. We're starting a sports podcast when there's literally no sports in the world. But hey, we're going to work through it. We got some fun ideas, so stay with us. We're just going to do a little quick intro about ourselves just so you guys know before we get into this journey together. So, Jacob, you want to take it away with a little self-intro? Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name's Jacob Bulls again, and I'm a 20-year-old uh, math education major, actually. Uh, love sports, always enjoy them growing up and everything. I played, personally, I played soccer, and I ran track and field. So, just a little bit of experience like that. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I've pretty much been all over the place. Like, I follow hockey, basketball, baseball, football. I mean, whatever's out there, it's Me pretty too. much whatever. Yeah, we're... We're on top of it. So, yeah, Nick, a little bit about yourself. Yeah. It's me, Nick Connect. I'm a 20-year-old real estate agent out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, I played rec basketball. That's it. There you go. T-ball. Oh, there T-ball, you go. rec basketball. That's my sports background. But I'm crazy cuckoo sports mm -hmm. fan, so you know. Yeah. But like I touched on earlier, kind of crazy. We're, we decided to start this sports podcast in probably the darkest times of sports. Because yeah. if you think about it, I mean... About a month or so ago, the sport, eh, I mean, just the the last, like, three months in sports have been crazy, because mm -hmm. David Stern dies. Yeah. Kobe Bryant dies. Like, what yeah. the actual hell? And then, now there's, I mean, it's probably been about a week and a half since almost all sports in the whole, whole entire down world have shut down. How, did, how weird is that shit? It's about? just, like, I, I can't even, like, kind of put my mind around it. I've never, I mean, obviously, I haven't been, I've only been here for 20 years, but I've never seen anything close to this. And Yeah, exactly. I just it's don't crazy. know. It's just kind of going to be weird to see how this kind of goes on and what comes out of it. See if uh, they continue the seasons or if that's just every, anything cancels. Yeah. yeah. I know. Um, XFL just canceled yeah. their season. I know that. And then one of the, one of the European football leagues moved their championship game till next summer already wow okay uh i know japan said they still are, still are looking to welcome the olympic flag so. okay really yeah I, I i've seen some things about maybe it getting postponed maybe getting pushed back it's just gonna depend on it's how it's gonna depend how this whole, whole thing just pandemic plays out. plays out but yeah we just want to talk about you know sports just have such a like a deep impact on you know there's some people hate sports some people love sports but the people that love sports the fandom that they create sports is just I mean I think it's crazy like to think about like my for example my girlfriend's dad hasn't missed a home Ohio State football game in like 15 years mm -hmm. yeah that's nuts it's just like yeah sports like brings everyone together it brings the it brings the best out in people and sometimes the worst but I mean that just <laughs> goes along with it yeah yeah but, no yeah I've almost thrown down a couple times playing pickup basketball but <laughs> that's just that's just, that's the, just competitive nature. It's competitive, it's just competitive, competitive nature. nature. Yeah, for sure. It it's just um, it, I mean like there's nothing out there right now, and it's just crazy to see like especially on all social media is how everyone's just out of their minds about this. Oh. That there's nothing going on. I mean, it's my day has been so boring without. Whoa, we hung out today. Okay, yeah. <laughs> play some two K. That's about it. Yeah, I don't know. For all you people that have played two K, if you don't start the game for a little bit. There's, like, a demo mode that goes on the screen. It's just a broadcast angle of two CPU teams playing. We caught ourselves watching that today and getting a little hyped. A little hyped watching Wizards and Detroit Pistons simulated NBA 2K basketball because that's how depressing this world yeah, is Yeah, it was 5-4 right to four after the first quarter. That's you watch how... marble racing at all yet? You see that? I did see that oh, on Twitter, actually. That was yeah, pretty exciting. That, was that blue marble? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, oh, that was great. That was a good one. I like that. So, to go on to the spirit with sports, and since there's not really any sports to talk about right now, we're kind of going to get into our favorite moments that we've had dealing with sports, whether that's our personal experiences playing sports or the memories we've made from watching our favorite teams play sports. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to kick us off here. This is going to send you back on a ride as well. One of my favorite sports moments, back in our junior year of high school, before the NBA G League was the G League, they were the D League, I want to put it out there, they stole it from us, us and about 20 to 30 other high schoolers in our school would, we can say this now because we've been caught and yelled at, we would break into the high school gym and we had a legit league called the G League, we did a draft with all the eligible players that we chose, we live streamed it on Instagram live and we would every Friday night till we got caught and yeah. thrown out of the gym. We had a league. I just thought, like looking back on that, that is crazy that we had, we would because sometimes we'd have people come watch. Mm -hmm, we would yeah. have like twenty people in like the high school stands just 
watching our organized rec basketball and, league. And it was not even, like it wasn't even like just messing around. Like it was actually pretty competitive and everything. It, like it oh. was a serious serious we, we deal. Had a fist fight happened once. Yeah, yeah, we were fighting. <laughs> and we, had, we had a pot and everything. Like a uh, for the money and everything. Yeah, but, it yeah. was oh some serious times right I there. I just that was just like I was hustling. There's another like sports moment for me, just like a rec basketball moment I was gonna talk about. And uh, that's what I was planning on talking about until I thought about this today in the car. And I just thought, Jacob was a part of G League. He was my second overall pick. I was yeah. one of the captains. And that that just was crazy. Just, oh. oh. Yeah, I mean, just... like, if that if we never had to, like, stop, like, I'd still be doing it probably. Like, Oh, that was so fun. That was, I mean, we would we would literally just uh, kind of, you know, cut a card down the gym door, get the gym door in. Then we knew someone that had a key to the ball rack, and we would get the ball out. We would get the, we would turn on the like, shot, like the scoreboard. It was crazy. I mean, like even the janitor, he was there. So they would even watch us sometimes. Like yeah, I, it, I remember the couple times that they were there late nights, and Ashley just stopped to kind of see what was going on. It was like, what is it? Uh, it was because it just it randomly started one night when we were all just sitting at our buddy's house. We're like, you guys want to see if we can get into the gym and play basketball? And then it just. It was just originally we had 10 people, and then, you know, it hurt out to more. So then that's when we, we capped it at a certain amount of people. We came a little bit of dictators, and we're like, we're drafting teams. You can't be an actual basketball player, mm -hmm. and you can't be playing a sport right now. And we were just kind of like, boom. And so it was just a bunch of just, you know, it was just rec ball. It was yeah, cool. I mean, yeah. Like it I, was just like, it's a moment that I think, you know, like we could look back at this in 20 or 30 years and be like, remember that time that we would get 30 people break into high school and ha we had a league? Yeah, for real. Like That, just, crazy. It, yeah, it told you, just brings up the best in us. We just all wanted to just get out there, have some fun, do something. And I mean, it brought us all kind of together. And Do you remember nine, were you there for nine foot night? Oh, um, when we dunked and everything, we yeah. The, we, we put yeah. all we, we had a night where we put the rims on nine foot. Yeah. For oh, sure. it was a dunk fest. Oh yeah, I mean, like that's just how it's gonna be. I mean, just having fun, trying to do best we can, trying to show off in front of all the girls and everything. Like obviously, just I just tried to show off for you. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you know, you impressed me <laughs> always. Yeah. So let's let's hear let's hear what you got in the uh, in the quiver. All right, so. Growing up, I've been an av I'm an avid Colts fan in the NFL, and I've. Peyton Manning has been my my guy. Like I've always been a big fan, and it was sad for me to see him go to the Broncos. But I still followed him. I was still still rooting for him, wishing him the best, and everything. And that 2013 season, where he had 54, 55 touchdowns, a lot, a lot of touchdowns. He had seven in the first game. I remember that against yeah, the Ravens. That was crazy. Tied a record, that. but that entire season just how it went even though i'm pretty sure they lost in the super bowl yeah that's the omaha game remember yeah the one the first, first game play, first play over his head. omaha omaha boom ball over his head what was that who was that against seahawks, seahawks yeah this is a game he lost against the seahawks i just as soon as i saw that first play i knew that was going to be it for the oh, game but like it was it was, it, it was, it was bad, bad after that like but like just for me just seeing him go and do that after Getting injured, like getting to the another team, it just it breaking made me, down to being old. Yeah, I mean, it made me happy to see, and then obviously oh, one of the all time greats. And now he's just I, I don't want to butt him, but I just Peyton Manning, like it's just like he's his a uh, personality, his media dude. personnel, like all of his commercials. He's just such a funny guy. I, I watched his keeping YouTube up with video he made when he was like cooking, like keeping up with Peyton. He's like, oh, Drew Brees broke my record. Nah, <laughs> call me when you break that one, and then Drew broke it the most touchdowns he's this like, year. Wait, he broke that too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Uh, he's just like I mean yeah he's so he's just so like such a great guy he's always looking out for the others he's rooting for people even like obviously like you said to break his own records and everything mm -hmm. just kind of shows you the guy he is and then it was great for me to see him win his Super Bowl with the Broncos and then retire even though he wasn't that great that season I'll give like I got carried by the Broncos defense mm -hmm. and everything but oh yeah I agree because we have that same passion. Because I have that same passion for Dwayne Wade. A little background story about Dwayne Wade. Um, me and my brother would play backyard basketball on the GameCube, and he was a big Shaq fan. And that was the year Shaq was traded to Miami, and or signed with Miami. Uh, whatever it happened. Yeah. But my brother would always use Shaq, and he would be like, "All right, he would use Shaq, and he would get LeBron." I don't know how he would end up with both of them. But he was always like, here, you can use this guy. It's Shaq's teammate. So I would always draft Dwayne Wade and the guy in the wheelchair. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then around probably, I want to say, 2008 or nine, I started watching basketball and getting into it. I mean, I was still young. I mean, 2008 mm -hmm. I mean, and we nine. I mean, we were eight, nine, yeah. You're we like 10 years old. Uh, so Dwayne Wade was my guy. And then 
you know, it's rough times. LeBron came, you know, I was just, I've been this bandwagon fan, you know. But I always say, what bandwagon fan has gone to Miami four times to watch him play, who's drove into Detroit mm-hmm. and Cle- did? I love the Heat. I got to watch Dwayne Wade's last game in Cleveland, yeah. and it was awesome because me and my cousin, we sat on the uh, guest, like, tunnel. We were, like, right on that right tunnel, there, right. and the whole section was all just Heat fans sitting there. There was not a Cavs jersey there. There's more Heat fans in the stand than mm-hmm. Cavs fans. That's awesome. And man. it was just... Shane Battier was, like, right in front of me, dude. I tried to go talk to him, and then this usher walked up, put his hand across me. He's like, no, leave him alone. I was like, dude, Shane ba- All right. You're like, okay, whatever. I'll, I'll let it slide this time. Yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there and just die hard. That's – watching Dwayne Wade's last game in Cleveland was crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm – in NBA, I'm I'm pretty much just a LeBron fan. Like, as of now, I I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to get this out of the way now. LeBron's the GOAT. Sorry, Boomers. We're LeBron lovers here. Yeah. I mean, All right, uh, continue. I mean, yeah, nothing against Jordan and his greatness. Like, he's definitely second second best all time. Second. Second, yeah. I'll give – yes, for sure. But, I mean, just LeBron and everything he's done. And, I mean, I got to, I got to see him his first game back to Cleveland yeah. from when he went to the Lakers. Yeah, his, yeah, first, his game, first, game, first game in first Cleveland. First game in Cleveland when he was a Laker. Yeah. And that was, that was a great game to see because oh. my girlfriend is – she's a Lonzo Ball fan. She's – what, however, that happened. She thinks he's cute. Yeah, he's some, so ugly. Somehow, but Lando yeah, is well, another story. Anyway, but yeah, I mean that was a really great game to go see. Oh, dude. just to, my um, that was my first ever NBA game. My yeah, yeah. my first ever NBA game for my eighth grade birthday. My grandma asked me, "What do you want for your birthday?" And I was like, "I want to go watch a Heat game." So my grandma, my cousin, and me, my grandma, my cousin, my uncle, we went to watch the Pistons Heat game, wow. 2014, LeBron's last year in Miami, and I watched LeBron get, crazy that I remember this, 27 points, 13 rebounds, and 11 assists. Damn. They beat the Pistons by 36 nice points. Nice triple-double on the They beat on them the by day. Th- the only thing that made me so sad, about an hour before we got into Detroit, I get a notification on my phone, injury report for the game, Dwayne Wade, out, Ray Allen, out, uh, Ray Allen out, Mario Chalmers out, Greg Oden was out. Oh, <laughs> whoa, I yeah. still, I was just oh, so because, like I said, that was that was gonna be my first time watching Dwayne Wade, and I was so sad. Yeah, but then since then, I have been to three games in Miami, and I've they've lost every time because it's been post LeBron era Miami. I mean, I watched him play against Lob City. Clippers, okay, yeah. Kawhi and uh, Kawhi and Lamarcus Aldridge Spurs, Spurs, and Isaiah Thomas MVP form Celtics. <laughs> but then I've watched them demolish Cleveland twice in the last two mm-hmm. years, yeah. so that's always nice. I mean, yeah, you take it as you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's still good to be out there. The atmosphere is. I mean, like I that's my first ever game, and it's nothing like oh, watching. It's so fun. Like I, I, just... I never thought it would be that exciting oh, in it's person so... and everything. So I remember, I, I still think my favorite game I've been to is the Heat Celtics game where they lost because they went on like a with like four minutes left, they went on a thirteen zero run. Goran Dragic hit this dirty step back corner three. The tie the game, Celtics call a timeout, the whole stadium is going nuts. Yeah, I'm losing my yeah. mind. We still lost by ten. I mean But it was just it's so exhilarating. Just the atmosphere, you Watch, just, it gets you gets you going so much. You're just so into it. Do you know what makes me really sad about um their not being sports right now? Right now, if the playoff I mean, I guess the playoffs still could start. But right now, if the playoffs were to start, Miami would be playing Indiana and me and Nate were gonna go to the game. Damn. Guys had it all planned out and everything. Yeah, we did. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's just crazy to think that we don't know how the season's going to, that's end gonna of the a, season's going to play out and everything. That's going to be a fun pod we can do about just the, all the hypotheticals and just everything that's just, that's probably because I've seen, uh, I've been yeah. keeping up with it a lot. Adam Silver, he said he's staying hopeful, you know, they've been talking to all the best, most brightest, like, health, Do- health medical doctors, med- medical professionals. They're shooting for a, trying to salvage the regular season, maybe the end of June, but it's just... This pandemic is, as much as it, you know, you can, I'm not trying to get in the political side or any of that, but you can look at, or you can say all about, like, look at the rate that it kills. You know, it only kills, like, the old sick people, and, you know, but Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's serious. It's, yeah, it's And it might not be as fatal as some of the diseases that we've had before, but, I mean, you're seeing it just... The numbers multiply. It's like it's multiply. super serious to think about since how many people in the NBA currently have it already, yeah, and, that, and they've already suspended the season. Like they've, 
Exactly. It's just it could have been so much worse. If they didn't suspend the season, they didn't. They just what? they tried to continue on with no fans, and they played like two or three more games. Think about that. That's more teams that are exposed. Because in the you, same team, like you, like if you, you like a Rudy Gobert and Darius Johnson Mitchell, that entire team could have been. That's that's the yeah. That's you. It's lucky that it was only two of them. Mm-hmm. But like you just gotta think about it. Like they're like saying you know like well these teams that have played in the Jazz in the last. Like week, you got a self quarantine, but then you got to look down the spider web. It's like, what teams have played the Raptors in the last week? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's certainly. Yeah. The 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 Heat played the Raptors in that week. Now, what team is? It's just like it was. They had the shot. It's sad as it is. Sports, the the world needed this reset. Oh, to try 100%. to beat this pandemic. Yeah, like I mean, but that's as, as rough it as it is, not having sports or anything. It's it's definitely the best but, call. And Adam Silver and the rest of the commissioners throughout every league, other I sport. Think Adam Silver has done is such the one that a great job. Started no one like he's he he. he they hit the domino. He hit the domino. Effect. They definitely put their foot down, and I'm glad they did. They set the way because, like, I don't think if they did that, I don't know if any other sport would have been like, I, I guess, ballsy enough to kind of do it first. At least uh, Twitter is streaming old games. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At least we get the. Free yeah, I'll save. I'll, sa- I'll save some stuff about that for my last little point. We're gonna. You want to move into some more sports moments here? Yeah. Do you want to do your next oh, one? Or? So I think this could be an obvious one. Uh, I live in Columbus, Ohio. The year was 2014. The first ever college. 2014, 2015. 14, you know, whatever. 14, 15, it's the same. Yeah. Same stuff. The first ever college playoffs right before the Big Ten championship game, JT Bear goes down. Yeah. Then it's just like, well, if you think about that season for Ohio State fans, Braxton Miller went down, and at the time, Braxton Miller was our golden boy. Oh, 100%. Braxton Miller yeah. went down, and I didn't know who JT Barrett was, and I didn't want him. I wanted Braxton Miller. No, and then, yeah. And then, no, and nobody, yeah, I mean, and then nobody JT could Barrett have saw. became a stud. No one could like, have saw JT that coming. JT Barrett, like, yeah. And then he becomes one of the best quarterbacks they, in yeah, the Big s- Ten. They See? smack Wisconsin, right? They, yeah. To get into the playoffs. Good with Cardell Jones. Yeah, they smack him. Like, it was like, oh my god, OSU's got this third string quarterback coming in. They smack Wisconsin, they get into the playoffs. They, they beat Alabama, they handle co- Alabama pretty convincingly. And then they go against Marcus Mariota, one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time. Oregon, one of the greatest college franchises of all time. Yeah. And they win 42-20. to 20. Yeah, especially, yeah, and he throws a pick on his last ever college throw and everything. Yeah, just and like Tom Brady threw a pick six on his last throw as a Patriot. Oh, Yeah, but, I mean, oh, that's, that's like, see, like, I moved here into Ohio that same year, and that was the first year I really followed college sports, like college football especially. Yeah. And that was just, it was a like the, the culture here the bu- in Ohio oh, yeah. is insane. Buc- like so, if you don't know, everyone here lives, breathes Buckeyes. This is the way I want to like explain it to you. When it comes to major league sports and all that, Ohio, you're everywhere. You're not like you're you're everywhere. Like for example, my dad is a Cowboys fan and a Reds fan. And when it comes to football, I'm a Browns fan and a Red Sox fan. It's just, but it just, and then basketball, my dad. Is a Jordan fan, <laughs> and I'm a Heat fan. But when it comes to college, it's you're in my house. You're a Buckeye fan. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Any anywhere in Ohio, it's pretty it's, much as Buckeyes. It's, you it's, barely. I mean, you culture. see a little bit of Michigan just sc- uh, scattered here and there, but that's just those weirdos over there yeah. being the yeah. culture here. And that's just winning that. It's been a struggle since. You know, we've made it twice since, and we've lost I mean, both last, times. Last year, it was just last one. Last year a heartbreak. Oh, Justin Fields was one pass away from winning that. I can't. I don't want to go into there it again. Was just, Let's I, talk about the happy times. I, I don't want to talk about the bad Let's calls talk, and everything. Dude, and, well, we beat another, Oregon. Yeah. We beat Oregon. We won. We won the first that. ever playoff yeah, I remember championship. That. It was just, Who I else would, can say that? There's no one else. No one. Screw you, Alabama. Yeah. yeah uh, Clemson, Clemson, who? Clemson, yeah. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Gee, Davos. Oh, dude. Yeah. But that just whole, like, season as a Buckeye fan, the excitement around, oh, my God, only four teams are making this college playoffs. Mm -hmm. We made it in on that fourth spot. We played Alabama in the first round with a third-string quarterback. Didn't get it. No one gave us a chance. No one. And then we go and we play Oregon. And it was like, dude, they're going to blow you out. Yeah. And But then when you look at the OSU side, it was that 12-gauge shotgun's going dunk. Well, yeah, if you look at that team now, I mean, obviously Ezekiel Elliott, stud now in the NFL. I mean, the quarterbacks. It's not state quarterbacks. We never. It, they we, don't we, really, we don't produce NFL it, it quarterbacks. It doesn't happen. But they, they were we produce, solid. We produce to... college quarter. Troy Smith. We, yep. Troy Smith, Braxton. We were reproduce great college. They're solid enough to hold their own and everything. Michael Thomas. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Michael <laughs> Thomas, and he wasn't even like our best receiver. No, back then. no. And now he's undoubtedly now he's, top I mean, five. We've got the re- most receiving yards of the yeah. season. Broke I, the record. I, I, I truly believe it's Julio or D Hop is the best. 
I, I'd have to give my edge to Julio, I think, a little bit. I mean, as great as D. I mean, obviously, both are amazing in their own ways. Yeah, but I just think they're all pro bowlers. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. mean, Julio just he just doesn't, I guess, get He's the so production. He's so big. If, if you give him, put him on like a team with. I don't know any other great quarterback. Matt Ryan can hold his own and everything, but I just think, I just I just think we can't judge him off this you, season. Yeah. it's been such a uh, such a flop this season. But it's like they were in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Matt Ryan has won an MVP in the last five years. Matt yeah. Ryan is. I mean, like he definitely does he, he production. Just, he does good. But and now, just... but hey, now they got more weapons. Wow, mm-hmm. we're, how, we're having to get to the NFL. Todd Gurley and Julio Jones, though. Yeah, big names. Tom, I mean, Tom Brady, obviously, yeah. moving to the Buccaneers. We're, we're going to have a whole pod about all this free agency and all yeah. this craziness. Just because I haven't remembered an M- NFL. We'll tease it here. I haven't remembered an NFL free agency in so long, though. This is crazy. This Think early, about all the names that have moved so far. This early in the season, yeah. And there's still big names to move, like Jadavion Clowney. Exactly. He still has to move. I mean, Phillip Rivers just went to the Colts. Michael, I'm pretty pretty happy about that and everything but i mean yeah there's still a lot of names that haven't gone gonna anywhere be, yet and it's going to be interesting to see how everything turns out so what's what's uh, what's on, on number two on the uh, jacob bulls sports see. sports memory sports moments kind of thing um let's see, i mean okay well i'm obviously a big lebron fan so mm-hmm. the 2016 finals crazy just crazy uh, that, that whole thing you can't you can't even write that it's the greatest series you can't in make the history up, of sports i like, uh, just the feeling I got going into that last game, knowing they could possibly do this, like oh, beat the three one, they could come back from three to Just one. Everything that happened that last, you know, like Steph Curry, one of the best playmakers, one of the best players in best the league, shooter of all throws time. a behind the back pass. Just like and he just why Steph and then you know it's just like you can't write that then you got Kyrie step back Hitting one of the most clutch shots I've second most I've clutch seen. shot of all time one of, yeah Ray Allen well obviously. talking about that that's our last point don't worry oh, let's okay, not beat we'll, it to we'll it get there yeah don't worry oh and then dude just a uh, I mean you can hear the announce I, I still it. get goosebumps you can still hear it Iguodala blocked by James I, it's just goosebumps dude that guy rest in peace to him by the way. That announcer died recently this year. Not to oh, get sad, but yeah. dark time of sports. Yeah, I mean that's just how. But like, you know that that was the greatest uh, seven game series in the history of oh, the NBA. Yes, it's just you had the, one of the it was, arguably one of the greatest teams of all times in playing, the Warriors there, and Le, it was just you know seventy three and nine. It was LeBron finally making what he promised when he got drafted by the Cavs. Yes, like he, he finally, finally brought that chip there. He he, he had to he do could it. leave in peace. He had to do it like. If it wasn't, if it didn't happen that year, it like, obviously you just got to think about how much that meant to LeBron when he won his first one in Miami. It was just a about damn time. Yeah, like what, and then the first one with Cleveland, he's on the ground balling his eyes. Like out. he took he took that team in 07 to the finals somehow and, against all odds and had to go up against had Otto to go, Ginobili, Tony Parker, and Tim Duncan in their primes. Yes, exactly. Except, yeah, that certainly. Spurs dynasty. That's something to talk about. That, they're looking like if they. They're, this is going to be the first time since 99 that they haven't been in the playoffs. It's crazy to think about. Nuts. Just like, I mean, obviously they lost all their big names. DeMar DeRozan just hasn't, he just doesn't seem to fit there. Like It's just, they tried to pair two good mid-range shooters together. Well, Marcus Aldridge and, and DeMar, DeMar DeRozan, DeRozan. They're both this. the two best mid-range shooter in the league, but yeah. you only need one of those guys. Especially in, in a three-point shooting in NBA, NBA, as NBA. Is, NBA as it is today. Yeah, it's just hard to kind of do that. I mean, like. They're still fighting for that A spot. They could possibly still get it and everything, but it's just it's not Grizzlies. looking. It's it's jaw. It's gonna be the Grizzlies. It's jaw. And I mean, Pelicans are looking good. I don't know if they're gonna make it though. It just all depends on what happens There's... when the season comes back, though. Yeah, I mean that's. But yeah, but know. that that final series, like I mean, it's just you know the Warriors handled it to them when the start of that series. And the everyone, first two everyone, games they smacked. Everyone I... read them off, and then Clay Thompson. Said LeBron's feelings. He set it. him off. Yeah, he, he told Le- he, he kind of ticked him off. He was like, "Oh, bit. LeBron got his feelings hurt," and then it was just like, ha, ha, ha. "Yeah, LeBron had had a good laugh about it and everything." And then he, I mean, Draymond getting suspended in Game Six. And then, that's, uh, dude, imagine if LeBron got that dunk off on Draymond. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. The end of Game Seven. If LeBron would have got that and one on Draymond Green, I don't know what I would have done. That, that would have been absurd, bro. Because I remember I was how hard he tried. I was to go up watching there. that. He wanted to destroy that man. I was like, watching that. It, it was just like a you know like I couldn't contain myself when I blurted what the actual at the top of my lungs in my family room. You know like at the time what, what two thousand 
I was like, I was 16. I'm just sitting there in my family room. My parents, I'm like, what the? I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but just like, I, I just see him running in there, Kyrie with the little pass to behind him, and I just see Draymond like turning around. I'm like, no, it's about to be. It would have been crazy. That would have been, been the greatest dunk of all time. Just, and then, oh man, and then, okay, props to Kevin Love. He didn't have the production, but locking up Steph Curry. Oh, that last possession. That was, was yes, when he. Oh, I mean, Steph Curry he, was trying to put the moves on him, and Caleb just Caleb stayed in front of him. Down. He had him locked him up. There's so many good. moments from that final. Yeah, it's there's just, just it's just you such can literally a great have series. an entire podcast just breaking down the entire finals, yeah. like hundred percent. Oh man! And speaking of finals, my my last sports moment is more. I mean, it's the 2000, 2013 Game Six of the NBA Finals. Um, so, like I said, I'm a diehard Heat fan. You know. We just creamed the thunder in five games in the last finals. And, you know, we're coming down. The Spurs are handling it to us. It's like, what, two or three minutes left. The Heat are down eight. The, so the Spurs are bringing out the uh, the yellow rope. Do you know what the yellow rope is? I... So it's when a championship is about to be won, they bring a yellow rope up. So people try to just oh. march and stands, it knocks them down. And so you can see, and you even saw the broadcasters switch to in the Larry O'Brien trophy was on, getting wheeled out. They were, I was at my great uncle's house. He was like, Nick, you want to go get some food? I was like, dude, this game's not over. Yeah, no. This game's not over. And then it's just that last couple minutes you have LeBron hits a three, then boom, LeBron hits another three. Kawhi Leonard goes to the line, misses two free throws. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I, I, I can, I, I. Cringe fest. I have this memorized. I do it all the time. My girlfriend hates it. But it's just James three pointer. No good. Bosh out to Allen. His three pointer. Tie game. Oh, just oh, Ray Allen. Just everything about that. Just it. Crazy to think about. Oh, my favorite thing is if you go back and rewatch that from the side, like the behind, like the actual broadcast angle, yeah. you can see Norris Cole when that shot's going up. Man, that kid is bouncing. <laughs> I was bouncing. He knows. That knows, shot goes yeah. in. They go to overtime. Hard fought game. Danny Green goes for the game winning three, and Bosch comes and just sent. Oh, he fouled the crap out of him. I mean, fouled the crap out of him. But it was a man manly block. It's it's a finals block. Like, and then you don't. Yeah. So the Spurs got us back, so it's fine. They, yeah. They made me so sad the next year. I mean, yeah, breaking up the. It's just Dwayne Wade was breaking down. And it, it it just wasn't. Wayne Wade was breaking down. It was time. And it for was kind of the dynasty. Kawhi just over. hit his prime, and it was like Tim Duncan was breaking down. Tony Parker was breaking down. Mono was breaking down. But the Spurs have always had a good team. Their bench players are insane, and they then just, Kawhi they, at the helm. They just all know the roles. It was the start so, of Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, it, it was. He has killed every big NBA dynasty. He beat Miami, and they disbanded. He beat the Warriors, and they I just, disbanded. He should not have beat the Warriors, though. I mean, if we're going to be honest. They if, were broken down. If Clay doesn't break his or tear his ACL. Tears ACL. Kevin Durant tore his Achilles. DeMarcus Cousins couldn't stay healthy. That's a whole different series. I, yeah, yeah, but we should be happy that it I mean, like, I'm we're glad. Like, happens. trust me. I'd rather have him win it than the Warriors win another one. Because that was, it was cool. I was – we watched that, that whole we thing We were right together. here. We watched oh, the yeah, last well, game. Right where we were recording Fred this podcast. Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van Fleet was contagious. Steph Curry Ever was since, afraid you, to guard did you, him. Did you see – so in the start of the playoffs, Fred Van Fleet was horrible. And then he had his son. He had his kid. And then he went berserk. He was... averaged like 20 points a game from the Western Conference Finals to Eastern Conference Finals to the Finals. He went berserk. Yeah. But I think me and you – because we became honorary Raptor fans for the day, but I think after that, like after the game was over and the dust settled, something that we talked about on that day, we were so happy for Kyle Lowry. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, so happy for I've, Kyle I, I, I've always felt bad for him that he lost to Marta Rosen because that was, it was like his best friend. Mm -hmm. Like they were like a dude, like pretty much like a well known duo. Like that's how I associated the Raptors was okay, Kyle Lowry and DeMar. And then you got the big trade, Kawhi for DeMar. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of just like it threw me off. Like it just didn't feel like the same team, but that team was solid. You got Pascal Siakam, who's a super good, improving player. He's good one most improved player. What last year, two years ago, something like that. Yeah. And now he started the All Star game. Now he's an All Star game. He started. He's, uh, he's in the top five MVP votes. Yeah, he's he's really out there. I mean, it's Raptors still this year look like a solid team. Even without forty three wins right now. I mean, if they continue the season going, I mean, they're the second seed right now. Yeah, for it's real. Crazy. They just Nick Nurse is doing a great job. He's a good coach. Yeah, he is a really good coach. We, I mean, like. We get. I, I found a really good big respect for that entire organization last year, and then, awesome. especially it's like it was kind of cool to see all of Canada kind of rooting for them. In the oh NBA, yeah, because you like, don't really see that. Like oh, they're the only team. Yeah, no Canada. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was funny. And then Drake's out here <laughs> doing, <laughs> goofing yeah. around, doing his own thing, just being being him. And then yeah, and then I mean, obviously, I found a good respect for 
Fred Van Fleet. I love him. Uh, he's a solid player. He's, like, a he's, he's definitely a underrated. He's a bucket. He's I like him he's a lot. Bucket. He's a bucket for sure. I like him a lot. So what's this last sports moment we got from so, the Bulls? We've talked about what? We've talked about NBA final series. We've talked, talked about football. football. We've talked about the personal experience of the G League. The R G League. Yes, for sure. The high school. Oh, so what do you got here for this last this last sports moment that makes your hair just stand up? Oh man, let's see. I went with Steph Curry versus the Thunder four years ago when he hit that game when he wow. shot. Wow. Wow, that was a game. I like personal I'm not a big That's like like I Best respect one. Steph. He's definitely the greatest shooter. The way you gotta, I, um, I had this conversation with someone actually. They're like, "Bro, that's the greatest buzzer beater of all time." And I was like, "You gotta think." I was like, "I think that is the greatest regular season buzzer beater mm-hmm. of all time." But I was like, Ray Allen's corner three and Steph and Kyrie and Kyrie shot, even though they were easy shots, really. Like it was a sidestep shot. One's in a corner. Ray Allen corner. It was the, the impact in the finals. But like when we're talking about just most impressive buzzer beaters, that game was crazy. He he had that twelve. 12 threes that game, yeah. tied a record. That was cr- And then just that shot at the end, I just still couldn't get over it. Like, So were you a part of the uh, people in Ohio that low-key had no problem with the Warriors but only got a problem for him when KD joined? I was, was me. Fu- I was fine with I them. loved the Warriors. S- like, the Splash Brothers, the they're Splash so Brothers, good. Like, that entire I loved watching it. It was just these two. Just like, Draymond Green, he's a def- defensive monster. Like, he's, he's good. He's like, just two, like, little, like, just skinny I mean, guys he's, out of nowhere. He's really yeah. unlikable, don't get me wrong, but I can dog. I can he respect was, his game. Yeah, he's definitely the scrappy. And he's the, as living in Ohio, guy that everyone team. just hated the Warriors because they, yeah. they, they beat our precious Cavs. And yeah. I had no problem I mean, with the Warriors, and then KD joined, and I was like, dude, that's annoying. Like you, the, just, you just won 73 games, and now you get Kevin Durant. Like, like that first, It ruined sports. The first year when LeBron came back with Kyrie mm-hmm. and Kevin Love, and both of them get injured for the finals, mm-hmm. and they still take him to six games, mm-hmm. just LeBron. Chose that was so, so impressive to me. And then next year, they go out there and they beat him. And then Draymond cries in the parking lot, gets KD, and that's when everything... It just ruined the NBA. Like, I love KD and everything, but me then too. when he did that, it... it was I, the, he was the golden boy of the it NBA. It blew my mind. He was, a, you know, his MVP speech in Oklahoma. He was the golden boy of the NBA. And then everyone turns, hated LeBron, and everyone loved KD. Turned snake right after. It's oh. just crazy how, it just, how it that ruined, It ruined the NBA for me. Because you it knew, was so you knew unwatchable. it was going to be the Warriors and the Cavs. And that's why I was so excited for this year, because no one knows what... What's going to happen this and year? And we have to wait even longer Is it going to be out? the Lakers and the Bucks? Is it going to be the Lakers and the Heat? Is it going to be the Clippers and the Bucks? Is it going to be the Nuggets? Is it going to be There's the so Rockets? Many good Is it going to be the Heat, there. the Celtics, the Sixers? Yeah. No one knew what was going to happen, and coronavirus just ruined the greatest, what might have been the best playoffs This was so long. I think it's still going to be, if they have it played it's out, it's going to be the greatest playoffs. Just You give these guys th- two, three weeks, even a, like a month. It's going to be two to three months. Yeah, like a month plus months of weeks. rest. Before the playoffs, they're gonna have legs. It's, it's either going to gonna be the best playoffs of all time, or it's, it's like a sloppy. It's basically like starting off the season fresh right now, like a whole new season, but just going into the playoffs, mm-hmm. and it's going to be so intense, so fast, so just oh, I can't wait. Um, it's going to be yeah, like I said, it's going to be the greatest ser- greatest playoffs we've ever seen. I think so. Or it's just going to be a slop fest. Oh, I think it's just going to be. It's just going to it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's I don't cool. think they're going to be rusty or anything. I think they're going to be ready. They're going to be roaring to go. I mean, like I can, I, I think LeBron's itching to get out there and try to prove himself. Get a haircut. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think just shave it off. Just I've said that. He's, just, but he's can't, trying. Can't to, go see his barber, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying his best out here, but I mean. Uh, I I can't wait to see how it goes and just every, I, I mean sports to be back. Uh, it's like 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 we said weird time. So you know we're all like you know basically in quarantine. Like you know I'm a real estate agent, so I can work from home. Jacob got sent home from college. I'm in school. I'm I've all been, online. I've everything. been talking about making this podcast for years, and I me and Jacob were hanging out today just to play 2K. I was like Jacob, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Let's make a sports podcast. This was like two days ago. Now we're here. Yeah, I mean it, it's. <laughs> This is fun. I'm liking it so far. It's yeah. nice it's to like. Just, what else we gotta nice do? To, what else oh, we gotta do? I mean, yeah, there's nothing. We can't go out. We can't do anything. Everything's closed down for the foreseeable the future. You can't future. even tell. Yeah. And no there's no sports to watch. Nothing. And it's just. I'm all over the That's, place. Like, it's just been video games for me. Exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tease a little episode. Not, I don't know when we're gonna do this one, but I wanna talk about what this, uh, this quarantine, uh, period and the, like, earth is gonna. Do for esports, yeah, for sure. Because I think now we live in a culture 
where because of Ninja and Drake, video games are cool. It's just it, it's we're in a culture where video games are cool. YouTube is cool. Uh, Think yeah. about it. When we, like I, I'll I mean, speak from personal experience. Like when I used to be talking, even when I first started talking to my girlfriend that I've been dating for three years, headset was off when I'm taking a uh, Snapchat. Yeah. But now it's like because of like really I think just because of Ninja and Drake and that stream changed video games. So m- I was there that night. Yeah, I watched. I that. watched the whole thing. It was insane. I mean, just like. The cross it definitely gave esports and video games a better reputation. Also, just really, just because Drake was there. I mean, exactly. And just I you just, have a big name like that, big name artist like that. Honestly, playing the, video the games, most famous hip hop personnel right now. Yeah, of, no, of all time. Even yeah, hip hop of all time, most well known. Yeah, definitely. And then, I mean, even like look at like basketball players right now. A lot of NBA players are streaming. They're oh, there's on Twitch. My- for everything. Myers Leonard, who is uh, on the Heat, he's a part of FaZe Clan. He's FaZe Hammer. Yeah. He's been FaZe Hammer yeah. for like three years. I like, mean, yeah, look at Josh Hart. Donovan ben Simmons Mitchell, is based, ben, ben Simmons is closely tied with FaZe Clan. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's video games. That's why I think, that's why I want to say, I just want to do a little tease here at the end. But that would be a whole fun podcast. I want to get my buddy John on here. So he, um, he, he's on a Fortnite team. The, like a like a minor major you know like yeah. not not a prof, not like a a class team he's working on it he's finding players but he's a the a leader of a witch doctors gaming so i just getting his perspective on what he thinks the industry is going to be and how it's going to grow would be cool yeah like I, I mean we always someone who graduated with our in our class went to ashland university yeah, to, go to, play, college, to go play play esports and that's just how just goes to show too. it scholarship goes for scholarship for that. It goes to show how it's definitely growing and it's definitely getting bigger and there's a bigger fan base behind it and it's going to be cool to see how it kind of grows and evolves from here because yeah, that's going to be a fun podcast because it's so and that's something you can just do like now quarantine like you can be everybody can be at home playing the game and still not get canceled yes, it's something sir, we like, can run that war zone all night long something like this is not going to ruin something like that where the and any sports is kind of on lockdown now see that's why Exactly why we started this podcast. We're like, we got nothing better to do. We can sit here and talk about hypotheticals till sports comes back. And once sports comes back, we can just ride this wave and be like, sports. But, like, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, see. for it's sure. It's going like, to be play day by day. So we're going to kind of talk about, I guess, like the scheduling, how we're going to do this. We're going to we – th- we're thinking, like, an episode a week on a Sundays. That's what we're shooting for, yeah. If there's – let's – Anything that's like emergency, like needed, if you know some big news, happens big news. Or... Even if Jacob can't join or something, or I can't, we'll figure out a way to do it. Like, let's say, you know, like we posted an episode on Sunday, but then on that Tuesday, Adam Silver announces that the NBA season is done. Yeah, for it's sure. like if if I can't get Jacob, I'm gonna hop on do a emergency mm-hmm. pods. Will happen if once the NBA season comes back and stuff like big, like big blockbuster trades could warrant. It's just we're planning on one a week, but there could just be random stuff. And, yeah, any big news? That's a big news podcast, stuff like that. Big so news. I mean, we're gonna shoot for as much as we can, really. Yeah, shoot to... for probably around like an upload schedule noon on a Sunday. Yeah, noon on be... a Sunday. And then once sports comes back, it's gonna be fun talking about what's actually, actually going on and happening, sports. and we're gonna have some more content to talk about. But exactly, yeah, we're gonna have to find some new new stuff to do now. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you guys for joining this first ever episode of the Goat Shed Sports Podcast. Don't forget to check out any new podcasts in the future if you're listening to this like after we've posted 100 and we're millionaires. <laughs> but other than that, if there's anything during this weird time in sports that you want us to talk about, let me know. Yeah, thank you again.